Titties. What? We're in beautiful Park of Roses. Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks right now. Uh, it is a nice springtime day. It's like 6,000 degrees outside. The liberals have won. This is exactly what... This is what they wanted. This is what they wanted. They There's wanted so global, many people here. They wanted global warming. There's so many people here. No masks for miles. <sighs> Including us. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're certainly victim. Of, we've been brainwashed. All these geese... They so many on. fucking geese. Where are their masks? They're not on. You want to know something funny, David? What's something funny, Tyler? So before I listen to the top ten list, I... Oh yeah, that's a thing. Our podcast? Yeah. Yeah, wel- welcome. <laughs> Forgot we were recording a podcast today. Before I... Uh, that's we were just true. We were just complaining about the liberal agenda. <laughs> and for real. Um, oh shit, you see that? That's fucking... What, that goose not wearing a mask? No, fuck, dude. The, oh, you know oh how... he's doing front flips. No, I'm literally not looking at that. Oh. But you know how like this sometimes the sun hits something and it hits you just right. Right in the eyes. Holy oh, shit, yeah, dude! I see that's that. the brightest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dude, right when you said, "Do you see that?" That goose did a front flip, <laughs> and I was like, "That was bad." That's probably pretty cool. <laughs> Whoa. That was perfect timing. This might be a little bit too much stimulant to record a podcast there. No. Anyway, so. It's perfect. My my, uh, I before I listened to the top ten list, I threw my uh, my play one of my playlists in a shuffle, and then I forgot to set it back. So I listened to the didn't top ten list. Didn't listen to it in order. No, I listened to it in shuffle, and then I did the exact same thing for the fucking album. So I listened Bro. to it again in order, but I didn't write them down in order. Fuck, dude. It's uh, okay, there's so the many order. songs. I know. I know. There's so many. I know. <laughs> this isn't like a normal album. Dude, there's I was so, so upset when that happened. So Anyways, believe me. How was your week? My week, my week started off not great. My week was. My great. dog died. Oh shit! And that's I went right. To work. That's right. I don't remember that. And no. I cried at work, and did, they made fun of me. Did you really? Yes, but they, they, make didn't, fun of you? they didn't make fun of me. Oh, they, good. I was going to say, fuck them. Tell me who will hurt them emotionally. They were going to give me the day off, and I said, no, I must work, because I'm sucking ass to get a fucking manager position. Well, not only that, but sometimes it's nicer to distract yourself. I mean, I was fine after the first hour. It was just because it was like right when I was leaving for work was when they were leaving with him to go put him down, and I was like, damn... It does suck. It sucked. Um, my week was pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't mean to touch you. It's okay. I went to, uh... I went to, uh... Lake, Lake Pond, Erie. Pond, 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 yep, Pond Lake Erie with my dad. Was, I went to Lake Erie with my dad. And there's, like, a, there's a nice beach there. I went to Toledo. Anyway. <laughs> That's a nice beach. Toledo <laughs> itself is a beach, yes. Okay, so... Let's just... Get right Let's in, just get jump into it. right into it. The dude. top ten list for this week is November twenty fourth. I'm glad you wrote that down. Nineteen ninety did not. Yeah, I do. Or else I f- forget what I'm even looking for. All right, no, no, the nineties, great time. This I was, was there like for most of it. <laughs> this was like a. That's not true. This was like proto nineties. Because this was before, yeah, 19, the, the first year of every decade doesn't count, like... Exactly. Like, 2020 doesn't count as the 2020s. No, this year, we're just, all, we're all gonna forget about this one. Oh, Anything yeah. you do during this year does not matter, that's why we started this podcast this year. Yeah, it's called a Christmas mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, 1990 that's was like, true. it was like 1985 that. too. Yeah. Maybe sequel. like 1989 too. Yeah, it was a sequel. I'm not sure why you said five. I'm not either. Mid 80s was different from late 80s, but you wouldn't know that. I mean, neither would I. Neither would I. My prime time was in the 60s. All right, so number 10. Knockin' Boots by Candyman. Holy shit. Did so, you know this song before this? Nope. I, I think I had heard of Candyman. Well, I saw the movie with the bees. There were bees in Candyman? I'm yeah. going to put my keys. No, bees. Bees. Oh. <laughs> like the second letter? Yeah, no, he's alphabet. like, he's like, he has a hook for a hand. And he, uh... Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, and I he, like, I... shoots bees out of his... Or he kills people with bees? It's been a long time. Speaking of bees, I really like this beat. The There's, like, claves in it. That's really cool. I was like it? that a lot. Was it? Yeah, no, it was... never mind. It wasn't this song. It was a different song. But... Um... Yeah, no, that's... I, re- I agree. The beat was pretty cool. It's, uh... It's very corny. I'd say it's very candy. 
<laughs> it's just too sweet. It's very syrupy. I actually said the flow is cheesy. I agree. Everything. But I actually is... really like it. Cause yeah. I, I like that like early '90s like cheese stuff. But it has to be done right. You know, like like certain certain cheesy things I think can be very good, like Cheez Its. <laughs> no, but like for real, like if it if it's done with a proper sense of humor, which I don't even remember. If I this think one did, did I feel have like good... he was taking himself 100 percent seriously. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if I'm being honest. It is it is fun to listen to to make fun of because it's it's very cheesy. It is very very oh, very so cheesy. cheesy. And this is the one that has like the girl in it, right? And she goes like, eh. yes. Okay. I didn't. I think it's this one. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't like that. If it's not on it. this song, still don't like it. So what do you what do you rate it? Well, hold on. There's also there's one last thing. There I can't remember exactly what he says, but he was like, um, let me see. Wait, is this the wrong? That's Luke Bryan. Wrong one. Um, you know, knocking boots means sex. Yes. <laughs> but it's like country sex. Yeah, it is. It is. Really sex. It isn't is. it? Isn't it? You know that Luke Bryan song came out like this decade. At least I don't know what what time. But... I don't even know who Luke Bryan is, buddy. Okay, he's a country artist. Well, but the point is, knocking boots means sex, but no country artist has ever written a song called "Knocking Boots" before Luke Bryan. That's dumb. So there's a part where he's like, "The boots I knock make me one bad mother." Uh uh he he uh uh he he. I fucking hate that with everything in me. It's not good. The this, the censor. Yeah. Is, in general, is bad, and then it's like. Oh, you're gonna replace it with a girl moaning and giggling? I don't. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> to be honest, it's it's not good. Um, I get it's it. also like, it feels like it's 20 minutes long. It's so long, dude. It just keeps going. Yeah. This is another song that like, remember that Zach Fox song? Nope. Okay, it was I called. I really don't. Yeah, I know. It, it's called a. Uh, it's called like. Jesus. It has something to do with Jesus. I don't even remember, but it's like a minute long, and it's just a dumbass rap song. It fucking destroyed the top ten charts because it was funny. And this song could be like... Like, this song, if it was like a minute long, I would probably think... I would probably love it. I'd be like, it's hilarious, but it's like five minutes long. Anyway, what'd you rate it? Six one. out of ten. It's whatever. I gave it a one. Don't like it. Okay, so, so number, what's number nine? Nine. Feels good. By Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony. I fucking hate that name, first off. Me Tony, too. Tony, Tony, Tony. Me too. Dude. So... You just call yourself Tony. Or Tony yeah. Cubed. That would have been cooler. It was still None of been them dumb. are named Tony. Oh, is it, it's a band? It's a rap group. Dude, I, I hated it so much that I just assumed it really? was one person. I really did not like this song at all. I liked the beat. There's, like, a part where it, like, pans from left to right... In the beat. That was kind of neat. And that's like yeah. really cool. That and that's something cool. I don't associate with like hip hop and rap. Like with the beat doing like cool stuff like that. You like black and have talent, David. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like that kind of talent. It's a different talent. <laughs> no, but I. It's like. That's more like a prog rock thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> prog rock invented painting. And then it was panned by critics. <laughs> and this. I like this song, dude. It feels good. It, that's it. Set out to you feel really good. You really think so? Yeah. Look, I wrote it right here. It feels I respect, good. I, I have respect to... that. I don't like it at all. Um, the beat has like so many noises at the same time. It's, yeah, I like that. It's weird. I don't like it at all, dude. It's weird as fuck. It's like it feels like my ears are being stabbed. Yeah, I like that. With a knife and a toothpick and a Q-tip, but like, in like rapid succession. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that, as you can tell. Well. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, but I no, I didn't I didn't like this one that much. There's also a girl moaning in the chorus and I just think that sounds dumb as fuck. Even it sounds artists, really dumb. Even when artists I like do it, it sounds stupid. It sounds stupid. But I did like the refrain, actually. Uh see, I don't know. It's alright. I liked it. In fact I gave it an eight out of ten. I think wow. I'm gonna drop it to a seven out of ten because I honestly can't remember a single thing about it. You know what? I did give it a 1-2 as opposed to a 1, so I did obviously think there was, like, something redeemable about it. However, this one is also long as fuck. Yeah, but it felt good. I, I think this one was too long also. But I also, uh, I found out that I kind of prefer short songs. So, when I say a song is too long, that might just be my 
my, my unfiltered opinion coming out. But luckily, this is my podcast, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Well, now, hold on. You got it. There's someone you forgot to ask. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, you're right. What if he doesn't like short he's songs? Like, he's like, personally, if a song is under 12 minutes, I don't even listen to it. <laughs> Imagine God having music taste. What would he like? What do you think God would like? I think he wouldn't like music. Christian music. He'd be I like, he that's, like gospel he'd be like, music. that's so corny. He'd be like, yeah, he'd be like, gospel is good, but like contemporary rap rock Christian music is awful. He'd be like, stop writing that. Do you think God shares the same opinions as you? Is that what you're... Are you projecting yourself onto God? I'm projecting everyone Do you want this God. podcast to be a cult? That would be pretty cool. I just... Sorry, <laughs> I, I just watched part of Tiger King, and they're talking about cults. I have not watched anything in Tiger King, but I do listen to a lot of stuff Dude, about cults. Dude, holy shit, you need to watch it. I don't it's have Netflix. legitimately... Okay, I'll watch it with you. It's so good. How's that going to help me if I don't have Netflix? <laughs> I'll give you... I'll give you something. I don't. <laughs> you need to watch it. Trust me. I'll, I'll let you. Watch I've it. heard it's good. I'm, I'm not it's like opposed to it. Good. I just have no way to watch it. Anyway, I'll get. I'll get you away. Feels good. I feels bad. That's my review. Seven out of ten. It's fine. I guess. I remember. I remember liking it a lot, but I don't remember it. Would you listen to it again? Probably to figure out what it sounded like. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> That's I, w- I would I, listen to it again, but I don't know if I would put it in my playlist. That's how I try to rate all these albums and songs, is like by how often I'll, I plan on listening to it again. Cause there, and there's, that's why I, I have like the 2 and the 2, 3, because there's some songs that I really like, but I don't want to listen to them again. You know? Next <laughs> is Prey by MC Hammer. Let me, hold on, let me find it. I had this as number 5, and I was like, there's no way that song was that good. It wasn't. Because it's not that good. It's cheesy and repetitive. This song samples When Doves Cry by yeah. Prince. Yeah, I saw that. But uh, I still called the beat generic. <laughs> I mean... It doesn't go anywhere. It's the same thing. It's the same thing for the whole song. But not a good song. But I kind of... I kind of... I'm okay with it. I don't like it that much. Um, but it's not... It was It was a, like. It was kind of pleasant for me to listen to. Uh, I don't really like MC Hammer that much. But the background vocals are really good, I think. I said it could be a lot worse, but it's really generic. That's why you pray. And then I was like, why, did, why didn't he double up on the verses? Because the chorus is fucking awful. I don't know. So, also, I looked it up on Wikipedia, Wikid- Wikid- and um, the word pray is mentioned 147 times during the song, setting the record for the number of times a song title is repeated in an American Top 40 hit. Oh, we gotta break that record. So that's not a good thing. Oh. At all. Looks <laughs> like we had two different trains of thought. No, it's not. Um, Seven out of ten. I gave it a two. I actually... Wow. I enjoyed listening to this song when it was on. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't necessarily go back and listen to it again. It is very cheesy and not that great. But like I said, the background vocals, really, uh, they do something for me. MC Hammer is not that good. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of MC Hammer, number seven... From a distance. Oh, I got that one right. By Bette Midler. No, no, just kidding. Oh, I did get that one right. Yeah, that was in the right spot. I, I you put didn't a seven, get that right. You didn't I do anything. And I crossed out the seven, and then I wrote a seven. <laughs> you didn't do anything. From a right. distance by Bette Midler. Um, this is just a cheesy '80s feeled ballad. Um, it's called a power ballad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing like super. It's not bad, but it's nothing super interesting. The Bette Midler is a decent singer, and, uh, like, the melody is, is, like, it's all right. It's just, like, standard. There's nothing, like, great about it, you know? The, the thing is, power ballads are really difficult to get right, because they're such a, like, cheesy type of song. Yeah. I don't... She gets close to getting it right, but it's not quite there, I think. Yeah. Um, the, the lyrics are bad, so I just ignored them. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. She starts talking about, like, gods and stuff. Yeah, it's a... I, yeah, I didn't From like it. a distance. There was a. I don't remember what the interlude sounded like, but there was a musical interlude that I, I said. I didn't even write down that there wasn't an interlude. Well, I said it was really cool, and it reminded me of of Paul McCartney, something he would have done. Also, I know that guy. It made me realize this is just fucking Ebony and Ivory, but less good. Oh, that's why you made me listen to Ebony and Ivory. Yeah. Wow. It's literally it like is. just this, but that, but worse. Like no. Just not as good. 
Dude, all the geese are coming out towards us. Yeah, they want to be in the cast. They're like, I want to give my opinion on Bette Midler. I don't think they have opinions on Bette Midler. Yeah, I they thought... do. Their opinion is honk. Scott. Honk. Honkers at me boobies. Next. Or, no, rating. I gave it a 6 out of 10, but I just dropped it to a 5 out of 10. I gave it a 1. I didn't like this song. It's less good than Ebony and Ivory, and I like that song. It is, of, it is like pleasant nonsense, but it's not like good still. Okay, what? Go speaking ahead. of pleasant nonsense, number six, Something to Believe in by Poison. Bro, I got that one right too. Poison. Uh, boring. I like the piano intro. The piano is not bad, but it's still boring. No, just the intro. Oh. The intro is cool, and then it gets boring. Boring. It just stays. It's kind of preachy too. I don't remember exactly what it was about, but... I, I just wanted to, like, read what I wrote. Okay, so the yeah. first thing I wrote was, I fucking love this piano intro. And then I wrote, country vibes mixed with hair metal power ballad? Yeah. I kind of like it. It and could then, be And good. then I said, <laughs> I wish the chorus had a melody. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually songs do have melody. It was so bad. And then I said, okay, the second time it has some sort of melody, but still, like, not really. And then... The lyrics are cliched as heck, and the melody is derivative as fuck, but it's got a nice vibe during the verse. And then... The solo is cool. The solo is cool. The solo is pretty neat. For my money? I wish the chorus had a better melody, because then I might actually like the song. And then the yeah at the end, I don't even remember how it sounds, but it literally, it dropped it another point for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this song is just a boring... <laughs> it's just a boring, preachy kind of... Poison band. is not a good band and never was. Well, they were a hair metal band, yes. Yeah, but they were also, like, a late hair metal band. They weren't even, like, original or creative. So that's why they had to write a freaking ballad in 1990, because they were like, oh, this is the next big thing, and if we want to stay famous... Well... Which sucks, because Poison is such a cool name for a band, I think. Yeah, you would think that. You also thought Slaves was a good name for a band. Just it kidding, is. that was me. You didn't think it was a good name, and then I was like, you're right, but it would be good. Well, Anyways. then I thought about it more, and I was like, no, I guess that is kind of cool. Five out of ten. Bad. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, speaking of five, number five, Because I Love You by Stevie B. Another ballad. Holy shit, dude. The keys are kind of neat. Why is 1990 filled with nothing but ballads? Um, <laughs> holy shit, dude. Yeah, no, you're right. This list was like, I think it was, it was either half or over half of the songs were ballads. Dude, I don't know. They had all blended together, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, because they're all, it's just slow song after slow song. The intro to this song was way too long. Also, this song has that like fake deep feeling to it. Yes, it does. It's like, it's like that where you're like, bro, if, if I punch you, and it hurts. Am I strong or are you weak? It's, and then the other guy's like, "No, you're an asshole." Because that, Cause that doesn't me. mean anything. Yeah, because you punch me. You and asshole. that you, you punched me to make a philosophical statement that wasn't even like it, it, that. You're just being an asshole. Listen, I don't like. That's what this song is. Stevie B punched me, and I feel bad about it. He also name drops himself. Does he? I didn't notice that. Yeah, he says he says like that's what Stevie B likes or something stupid like that. And I'm like, nah. and I was like, no, Stevie. The echo is dumb. There's an echo on his voice. This is another funny. song, too. I think the chorus and the uh, verse, it's all the same chord progression, which isn't necessarily, like, a bad thing when a song does that, but in this song, it was boring. Also, I just noticed your outfit matches very well, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. I planned it. I didn't plan mine at all. Well, it matches very well. Does it? Yes. I wouldn't know. I'm colorblind. <laughs> yeah, he thought Walgreens was green. What a fucking idiot. What a dumb it's red. Ass. It's in the name. Wall. Which is Irish. For Rojo. <laughs> Dude, this fucking... Which is Look at how close that goose red. is. Hi, goose. Holy shit. It's eating grass. I don't want to talk to it. To the goose. You don't? I don't want the goose to come here because they're. I love geese. I don't want to get in a fight with a goose. Dude, I have. You know how you're fed... supposed to, no, you know how you're supposed to deal with a goose? How? Oh. You fucking grab him by grab the neck. neck yeah. You chuck it as far as you can and run the fuck away. 
dude, I have never had pro- you n- listen, never had dude, problems with a goose. No, I get I uh I used to go to Schiller Park and I would get geese to eat out of my hands, bro. I got baby geese to eat out of my hands, David. It was amazing. I felt like a Disney princess. You, what did you feed them? British bread. British bread. British bread, yeah. What? I said bread, and then I said just bread. I said bread, and then I stopped, and I said just bread, and it sounded like I said British bread. That's what happened. <laughs> oh. Five out of ten. Also, I hate his voice. He's not yeah. singing on beat, like, at all. No, I think he's... It's like, oh, it sounds cooler if I do that, but no, it doesn't. Yeah. Also, like, holy shit, there's so many fucking... I literally wrote, why are there so many power ballads on this list? Most of them suck, this one included. Agreed. This one's not good. I gave it a one, too. Speaking of... Groove is in the heart, number four, by D... Light. Light. This is the only song on this list that I actually enjoy a lot. I, I love this song. I love the bass line. I love the groovy feeling of it. Everything about it is amazing. It's in the heart, you might say. Um, sure. It's a hell of an intro and beat, yeah. and I totally dig it. And all the like noises and stuff, even though they're kind of cheesy and stupid, they're like fun. Yeah. And they make it they make it good. There's um a couple, well, there's only one lyric in this one. There's they said my succotash wish. I don't know what that means, doesn't but mean I just anything. like that a it's, lot. Doesn't mean anything at all, but it's 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 a I, this song is an I am the walrus situation. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Cuz also like just like I am the walrus, there's not really a whole lot of in the way of melody. Like it's there, but it's not like a standout melody. Yeah. It's mostly about the like atmosphere and the yeah. the yeah, yeah, background, yeah. which is the groove is really good it is. and it's trippy as fuck, but and I there's, like it. There's a lot going on, but it's it's good. And there were more claves in this song. Yes, there were. There, there was marginally more claves. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, there was like a part. I think, was there a part where like everything dropped out and it was just bass? Yes. Yeah, that was really fucking cool. And then they added in the cowbell, and then they like hand yep. the cowbell left and right. Dude, and the bass said, line in the song is amazing. I think it was uh, Bootsy Collins, but I'm not sure. Which, if you don't know, Bootsy Collins is an amazing fucking funk bassist and musician. He's like one of the greats. And I think that's who played... I'm, like, 99% sure that's who played the bass line, but I might be wrong. Uh, Todd in the Shadows does a very good video on this. Wait, really? Yeah. Is this a one-hit wonder? Huh? Is this a one-hit wonder? D-Light, yeah. Fuck, dude. I I figured there would be one of the... One of... One of... Hold on. (laughs) I figured there'd be some songs on the top ten that were one-hit wonders that Todd would cover, but I didn't think... I thought I'd check them all. Did not check this one. I'm going to fucking watch this video. Yes, this video is very good. Welcome back. We... I feel like we just seem like assholes because we just stopped talking completely as those people walked by. What? Were we supposed to say hi to him? Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, I think that's who was having the party, right? I think so. Well, there's people over there still. But we're not, we didn't like give him dirty looks or anything. Speaking of giving him dirty looks, this song <laughs> is really good. <laughs> Which one? The one we're talk- still talking about. Oh, we're still about. talking about, yes. I the agree. ending was just as interesting and cool as the intro. Just, just as much. It's just, it's good. And it's all good. It is really good. I gave it an eight out of ten, but in parentheses I put nine question mark because I was originally going to listen to this again and then I didn't, but I will, and it might go up to a nine. I gave it a two three. This song is very good. It's already on my playlist. I had a feeling. Speaking of having a feeling, I'm your baby tonight, <laughs> by Whitney. Houston. By Whitney Houston. Uh. Number three. What do you three. Think? What do you, what do you think? I fucking love the cheesy 90s drum machine Yeah, sound. me too. Dude, it's... Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, nostalgia, because I don't have nostalgia for that period. I wasn't alive. But certain... I feel like music... Some music can just have a nostalgic feeling. can make you feeling. feel nostalgic for a time when you weren't alive. Yeah, like, you know the song awesome. uh, Photograph by Ringo Starr? Nope. No? Never yes, mind. actually, yes, I do. Does, is, that's, like, nostalgic as heck. Well, Vaporwave is very... Vaporwave is like that. That too. Yeah, it's a Vaporwave song. Ringo Starr actually had the first. He actually vaporwave. pioneered vaporwave. He had the first vaporwave hit in uh, 1970, <laughs> two or three, I think. I don't know. The point is, I love it. The song's also, good. Whitney has one of the best voices, period, just ever. Period. Yeah, her voice is amazing. I don't remember how it sounds at all, but there's a part where she's like, "Baby, decide." 
or something. That's probably not how it goes. That goose just took a poop, bro. Poop. A poop fat goose. dump. Anyway. But there's a... She says, like, baby decide. And I wrote it in all caps and quotations because I like it. Whatever it sounds like. The chorus is very catchy. Very cool. And the instrumentals are also... They're very good. This song is... And it sucks because if this... If there weren't so many other ballads on this list, this song would stick out a lot more to me. Huh? Which, it, that isn't the song's fault itself. I feel like it did stick out a lot to me. It still stuck out. It just... There were so many... it was just really good. Also, the high note, she says anything... But it's like really cool. It yeah. Really high. I think she hit that note I just hit. Yeah, probably. I gave it a two out of three. Oh, sorry, a two three. I gave. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it an, an eight out of ten, but in parentheses I also put nine because once again I was gonna listen to it again, and oh, then yeah. I said, nah. <laughs> um. Speaking of nah, number two. More than, more than words, words can, can say, say by, by alias. alias. I feel like this song was... It's another ballad. Another power ballad? <laughs> yeah. Why? Uh, I feel like it was a mix between Bette Midler's song and Poison's song. Because Bette Midler's song... Well, okay, so they were both boring songs. But Bette Midler's song... <laughs> but if you combine them, you get a cool song. Kind of. Well, see, because Bette Midler had better vocals. They still weren't necessarily great. But the, the thing, stuff she was doing with her voice was more interesting than music. And then Poison had more interesting music. And they had, like, a kind of cool solo. But the, obviously the lyrics were kind of dog shit. Um, this song is about is a power ballad with like it had like big drums and like a, a cool solo too, but the the singer was actually pretty good. Um, but still, eh. <laughs> the guitar solo was good. Yeah, the guitar solo was good, but overall, yeah, this song was, it was just, decent. It was just eh. Also, the song, like the two songs before it, were ballads. And the three, four songs before that. Holy shit. Speaking of ballads, oh my God, number of one ballads. is Love Takes Time by Mariah Carey. Oh, um, hold on. We didn't, I didn't rank it. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. I'm sorry. What did I rank it? I don't know. You didn't say on air. Two. I gave it two. Two. Speaking of two. Number one, <laughs> Love Takes Time by Mariah, Mariah Carey. Carey. Cool? Freak it. I love the production. The yes. minimalist like, yes. production. And the, the percussion in this song is really cool. There's really, really a... Cool. David was listening to it in the car before we started this, and I noticed that the uh, there's like low tom drums that do this really cool thing that's like pan from side to side. Yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool. The music is pretty good, and uh, it's I don't know. It's weird because I I think this deserves a spot as the best ballad on this list. Um, it's definitely either this one or for me the Whitney Houston or the Whitney Houston one, one for sure. Yeah. I think um, Whitney's a better singer than Mariah, but Mariah's no no slouch. And the music was was a little bit more interesting in this one, I think. And it's funny too because like it I uses so. literally like those cheesy '80s ballad keys, but it still sounds good. It just sounds good. It's just good. Yeah. It's just good. Um, it's just good. Which the the top three songs are probably the reason why the entire fucking list looks like that. Yeah, probably. But even then, like more than words can say, it was not that good. Like. Right. I don't know. So, it's because it was Mariah Carey and, and Whitney Houston and probably other female singers that I don't listen to. Uh, males only, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, ladies. Uh, uh, oh. uh, she, it's funny, she hits like one of her whistle tone notes. But I fucking it, love it, dude. Really? I do. I thought it was just funny because she hits it at a time where like if she wouldn't have hit it there, it would have... Like it didn't enhance it in any way. She just randomly goes... <laughs> Are you and talking I'm about like, the outro? Because that's what I was thinking of. I think there's a part in the middle where... Maybe it is the outro. I just remember... Well, this song is also not, like, 20 minutes long. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which is another reason I like it more. Well, I was just, I specifically love the ending part, because it kind of almost sounds like a an outro. That's not what I meant to say. It is an outro. And it kind of sounds like an instrument, instead of, like, a voice. It just sounds like a cool, otherworldly instrument. But it's just her well, voice. Well, whatever part I'm thinking of, I wasn't... I, I just thought it was funny. It wasn't, like, bad. I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. Uh, I also... It's super 90s. Yes, it is. <laughs> but not in a bad way. It is. No, yeah, it's very... This one is also kind of nostalgic. It is. I give it 8 out of 10. This one also might go up to 9. But... I give it a 2. Yeah. So that was the top 10... No. There's a lot of fucking power ballads. Good Way too many power ballads. Good thing there's none of those on this album. 
<laughs> at all. Nothing even, even really remotely, remotely close. close. Nope. Uh, so now the moment you have all been waiting for. So, Ween, Ween is one of my favorite bands of all time. What what all do you know about Ween? Don't don't talk about this album unless you knew a song before that, okay. which I doubt. Okay. But what, so, what what are your thoughts on Ween? What what do you think of them before the album? Yeah. Okay. My dad showed me Push the Little Daisies before you did. He showed me when I was like 10. He's, he's loved that song. Seems like a bad idea to show a 10 year old. Well, I. Uh, that song. But I like that song a lot. I think it's amazing, honestly. Uh, there's a song off of Chocolate and Cheese, I really, uh, Voodoo Lady. I love that song. Um, and then Ocean Man, obviously. Everybody loves that song. And I listen all the way through the Mollusk. And the first, I, the first time I listened to it, I was like, wow, this is great. And then I listened to it again, and I was like, oh, I still like Ocean Man. So, the thing is, <laughs> there were three Ween songs that I really, really, really like. Um, now, I do know, I think, you, I think there was one song on here, I don't remember what song it was that you told me to listen to a while ago, like a long time ago that you showed me. And I hated it. I thought I, it was the dumbest shit ever. So I, I don't know. It was weird. So like, I had these three songs that I liked by Ween, but if not prompted, I probably never would have been like, oh, I should check out a Ween album. Um, and it's kind of a meme <laughs> that like, you love Ween's that David loves Ween so much in our friend group, and yeah. uh, every Dane like hates Ween. <laughs> so does Jake. And Jake does. Vane. 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 Vaughn and Matt are actually starting to come around to it. I don't know how John feels about Ween. John likes Ween, but not to the same extent that I do. John really likes the mullet. That's right. He owns it on vinyl just like me. Yeah, so, so like, um... He was the one who bought me it, actually. So he I... He bought two of them, one for him, one for me, which is kind of odd. But I'm not complaining, because I love that album. cool of him. Um, but they, uh... So, like, I, I did... I don't know, I don't want to say I had, like, a negative impression of him, because I really didn't have any impression of him at all. Yeah. Um, I did, like, I didn't... I would, uh, participate in, like teasing David about liking Ween so much. Yeah, it's for, uh, for the meme. Exactly. But I don't, I really uh, didn't have that much of an opinion beforehand. Other than, other than, really, if anything, it's a net positive because, like I said, I really like those three songs I mentioned. Yeah, because, like, I feel like going into this, you had the idea of, like, oh, yeah, these guys could write a really, really good song if they wanted to. And they did, at least three times. Um, so this album is called God, Ween, Satan, The Oneness. Can the I say is... I fucking hate that album name? I think it's the dumbest shit ever. It, 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 the reason it's named that is because it's um, it's supposed to be. He called it God, Ween, Satan, the shit. The shit. The reason it's it's like that is because it's supposed to be God, and Satan and Ween are all one thing. And whatever. Um. I get it. Okay, I get it. I just think it sounds stupid. Yeah, it does to say it. Most people just call it either God, Ween, Satan. That's why. Or the oneness. I feel like either of those by themselves would have been better album names. Yeah. Um, what do you... What, I want to talk about the album cover. I actually really fucking like this album cover. It's okay. Um, it's, so, uh, it's like... That, the background color is like a kind of like dark pink magenta, right? It's like this... Well, I, I would call it bright almost pink. Bright pink, but I don't know. It's just like really fucking... Oh my god, look at my tan line already. Nice. Let's see about mine. Ooh, look at that. I can't see you. Either. Yeah, that's okay. I don't have one. so dark. So... It's like this big, it's basically this bright, dark, I don't know, pink, very vibrant yes, pink. Yes, vibrant. That's the word I was looking for. In the background, which I love that color and Me more too. people need to use it. That's, that. I think that's probably my favorite sh color, is that shade of pink. That's why I picked this album. Nice. It's not why I picked this album. Well, it's good. I like it. And then it has a little dude on it, and that little dude is called the Boognish Monster, and it's a demon god that Ween made up. There's a song kind of about it in this song, in this album. Um, it, it, I'm not actually that into Ween like Ween fans are. Ween is a very culty band. There's a lot of like lore behind Ween, most gotcha. of which I don't know about or care about. Right. Because it's, but um, <laughs> basically, Ween Ween is okay. So but Ween is two guys. Uh, Dean and Gene. Dean and Gene Ween. Gene, Dean is the guitarist, Gene is the vocalist. That's how you... Which one plays drums? Uh, in this song, in this album, it's actually a drum machine. But they have a friend... What? Yeah, they have a friend called Mean Ween. 
who will do the drums. I believe it's a drum machine. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, see, I'm okay, not. I just thought drum. they were like real drums in some of them. They might be. I don't. I don't honestly know. Um, Dean Ween was kind of a jock, and G, uh, Gene Ween was a self-described trench coat kid. Which I have shooter. no clue what the fuck that means, but it terrifies me it's to like, think about. It, okay, a trench coat kid is like a kid that would fucking wear a trench coat to school. He probably likes anime, and he's probably like really socially awkward and like weird to talk to. And uh, yeah, he like wears. <laughs> Remember that kid that used to Naruto run through the halls? Anyways, there's a lot of stupid, dumb lore um, with Ween, but. The important thing is they met, I think they met in middle school um, and they became friends and started writing music like very early on. Yeah, weren't some of the songs written when they were like 14 or something? Yeah. It, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, without further ado, let's go. I want to get into God, Ween, Satan, the Oneness. All right. So the first song, you did you go back and listen to this in order? Yes. Okay, good. So I don't have them song, written down yeah, in yeah. order though. The first song is called You Fucked Up. You Fucked Up. Did you listen to this as your first song the first time? Yes. Okay. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, well, first off, there's... The, the, this album is just a collection of songs album. It's really... Yeah, there's not really a... Until the end, I don't think there's much of a cohesive, like, story. The 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 closest thing to a cohesive story that I can pick up is... The, it's the kind of the story... And this is not even because... They didn't even set out to do this. This is just what happened because it's what, what was happening. It's like a kid growing up. It's like the story oh. of a kid who starts off in like middle school and then by the end he's graduated, maybe moved on to college, which is exactly how probably how most of these songs were written. So this song huh. you fucked up, what I wrote I like for that. it. For each of these songs, I'm gonna introduce it and say, this is what I think it, how it ties into that theme. For you fucked up, it's just a kid learning to swear for the first time. Like they just, uh, they just now learned like what swear words are. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, what do you, what do you think? Okay, so the lyrics are dumb. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't, I don't really think. I think that's kind of unfair to say for this album though, because most of the songs on this album, the lyrics are dumb as shit. However, it is done the, on on purpose. The guitar, right? So that's yeah. why I think it's hard to kind of judge it based off of that. You can you can say you don't like it, and that's fair. But it is. It's, it's kind of supposed where it's to a be creative, like that. Yeah. Uh, decision you can just disagree with. Right, so if you don't like it, then you just don't like it. Yeah, um, which I, I understand. <laughs> the, so yeah, the lyrics are dumb, but I wrote, they're delivered with such conviction. Um, it's just, it's literally just, which one's the singer? G, uh, Gene Ween. Gene, just you have to remember it. Gene, G for great voice, and Dean, D for dirty licks, because he makes nice. dirty licks on the guitar. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, speaking of guitar, the fucking... The music in the song is amazing. It is fantastic, so good, dude. It's just a punchy, like, punk rock song. And honestly, like, I don't know. It just, it, it feel. I don't, I don't dislike it at all. I kind of, uh, yeah. It's just like a fucking, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of good. It's just a, like a hard. He's just like screaming, swear words. Screaming his fucking head off, dude. Yeah. The the, I, Ween is such a hard band to characterize. But I feel like there is no other song that could have started off their career better than this. Because the first lyrics are, You fucked up. You bitch. You really fucked up. You fucked up. You fucking Nazi whore. And he's just like screaming this at the yeah. top of his goddamn he's not really. He's not really like doing it in time either. <laughs> no, he's just screaming. I love it. Dude. But it's kind of badass. Yeah. It's so badass. So this is what I was talking about with hardcore punk. Yeah. This is basically kind of hardcore punk i can appreciate um, a song like this i i could not sit down and listen to an album that's like all songs like that but i can appreciate a song like that from time to time and especially like this I one i agree even though he's just saying you fucked up it feels like kind of personal you know yeah. and so i i just uh, that's that conviction i was talking about so i he, I, I, yeah. I like this song i do he really sells the anger he is yeah oh my god yeah. he is screaming his head off as loud as he possibly can but um I absolutely love this song. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. 10 out of 10. Wow. Um, yeah. I don't like it quite that much, but I do still like it a lot. I gave it a 2-3. All right. Are, um, you, are you surprised I gave it a 2-3? This one, no. Really? I, well, I figured you, you would like I, this song. Do you, do you think that I... Did you think that I hated Wayne? No, but I... I'll, I'll, I'll do it song by song. Okay. 
So I did think you would like this that song, not as much as me, obviously, but I did think you'd like it. Okay, well, you're The next right. song is Tick. Hold on, let me find it. Yeah, you got okay, here it is. Tick. Four pages. Tick. Okay, so um, this one is kind of like a, a, a continuation of You Fucked Up in the sense of in, in the narrative, where it's like this kid is still just learning to... to learning what anger is, how to verbalize it instead of crying, I would say. And also, he, I, what I wrote specifically was kid finds a tick and wants to kill it, and kids focus on small things. It's just like kids oh. like make small things a huge deal, Yeah. even though they're obviously not. He was talking um, about how it's going to like kill him. Yeah. And it's like, what? Yeah, and I, I kill you? going into this song, I would think you would be, I don't think you would like it as much as you fucked up, but I think you would like it, but not to the same extent you're right yes tick okay so it's this one is more it feels more like a story um and are both of them singing on this one i think so yeah one is completely in the right ear and one is completely in the left ear which i think is pretty cool the music uh, once again is fantastic uh yeah and the part where he goes uh where he goes spiral around spiral yeah the one in the left i love it the one in the left ear Gene, okay, he like when he says spiral, he like screams, and it's the funny. I listened to it like six times it's just that so part because it's funny. It's funny and it works, but it's mostly it's hilarious. Like he goes like, Sp-! I can't even do it, but it's so funny. <laughs> that guy fishing just gave me a weird look when I did that. Anyway, I wonder why? <laughs> I don't know. Probably because I'm brown. But anyway, no, for real, it was good. It was good. Um, it, this song, yeah, it's not as. For whatever reason, I don't like it quite as much as you fucked up. Um, I don't really know why. I think, I don't know, um, but but like I said, the music, it's good. This this, this one is also good. Um, and also, okay, sorry, one more thing. And again, the lyrics are stupid, but like I said, you can't really like judge, especially on this album, you can't judge a song based off of the lyrics like that. Yeah, I, I made, I made uh, I don't know that you actually followed through with this, but I, I told Tyler specifically to listen to, the, to him with the lyrics on. But I, I, looking at his face, it seems he did not do that, which what, is okay. Dude? What? Huh? I'm not getting graded for this. That's fair. <laughs> um, the, the, speaking about the lyrics, they have a lot of like nonsense lyrics. Yes. Very surrealist and very hyperbolized, yeah, which, which I really like. I like that too. I like surrealism a lot. Yeah. Because um, there's like, he's like, um, what is it? In the morning I'll be dead if he doesn't leave my head. And then he's like, I'll, <laughs> I'll get you, I'll burn you, I'll crush you, I'll flush you down. Yeah. Toilet wheels spiral around, 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 yeah. Around. And then uh, the lyrics are just, for the chorus, and he's just going like, ah, tick, mm, tick, tick, tick. And he's like, brrrr, tick. Yeah, that part's I fucking badass. love it. That part dude. is really cool. Um, I absolutely love the guitar work yeah. in this song. I, that riff, that dump, da 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 it's just so catchy and simple. And then the one where they're going crush you and flush you or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like... It's a really good, yeah, just like really fast, punchy rock song. Um, the solo is also... The solo in the last song, I didn't mention this, was fantastic. Um, you fucked up. Yeah. The solo in this song is also fantastic. It, it It's super chaotic, which is what I really like about this song and this album in general. It's like the embodiment of chaos to me kind of controlled way. chaos yeah yeah so I, I would agree with that so yeah I, I actually originally I gave this a 9 out of 10 but I gave it a 10 out of 10 this time because it, it really just sticks with me I don't know why I gave it a 2 but yeah an but important, it's still good an important thing about these songs is that they're very short which yes. works to its advantage yes that's because this song point. could not last for 3 minutes no and like I said that's I think that's part of the reason why I enjoy these so much yeah because if the song was 3 minutes I probably would hate it yeah um, all right, so 10 out of 10, you said, what, two? Two. two. Okay. Two out of three. The next song, I'm in the mood to move. <laughs> Let me find out. Uh, so the, the way that I kind of, like, tie this one into the concept is it's a kid making really unfunny jokes, because kids aren't funny. Correct. About fat people that just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and I think you don't like this song. Okay. It's funny. It is very funny. Uh, is that Gene? I I Talking. don't know about this. This one's the only one I think might not have Gene Ween singing it. It's either Dean or someone else. Well, and he's not even singing. He's just like talking. And it just well, starts... I'm in the mood to move to the left three feet. God damn it. It's funny. It's really <laughs> fu- And then the, the music is just like... Bang, bang, 
bang, bang. <laughs> so good. It's a, it's a bass. Yeah, it's like a bass guitar, and it's just going like. Bang. And there's also like a drum kind of like playing on sticks with it, but yes. they're out of time every single time. Yes. And it's just so good. And so this was funny. It was fun. It was kind of fun to listen to, but it's not something that I would ever. I would only throw this on like ironically. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant with that. Was that you wouldn't be like. Oh, this was one of my one of the standout tracks. Yeah, more but, like well, it did stand out because how stupid and fucking hilarious it is. Yeah, it's very cool. funny. I have to, I have to say, it is so funny. <laughs> oh my god, it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. This has one of the, their best examples of the surrealistic nonsense yes, lyrics. Yes, exactly. Sunny fish, melon jelly, ball in the jack at meat wagon now. It like, kind of reminds me of the Beatles <laughs> a little bit. That's yeah. I didn't really make that connection. In, on this song it sounds like a John song just like the, the lyrics themselves I didn't make that connection on this song but yeah that um, actually yeah yeah so so honestly like it's kind of hard for me to critique this one because like I <laughs> I know that probably sounds like backhanded but like for real like it's kind of it's like not really it's not necessarily meant for like a deep discussion you know yeah it's not it's just ha- them having fun in the studio exactly exactly and that I think uh, once again with that artistic integrity I fuck with so much they put this song out because they were like, fuck it. I don't care what anybody thinks. Yeah. I'm in the move to move. God damn it. Yeah, so <laughs> motherfuck. Like, yeah, he doesn't say motherfucker at one point. He goes, motherfuck. I <laughs> fucking love it, dude. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, for me, it's only really good in the context of the album. Like, if I was listening to this album, I would never skip yeah, right. this song. Yeah. But I would never, uh, very rarely would I be like, I'm in the mood to move. <laughs> I'm in the mood to listen to I'm in the mood to move, you know? <laughs> um. But it is really funny. I really yes. like it. And it, it's only a minute long. Like, it, it works because it's exactly, a minute long. Exactly, exactly. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I, really, I gave it I a still 2. still like it. So, so we, we gave it the same rating, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. All right. Honestly, Number... dude, at this point, I was surprised. I thought I would I thought I would hate a lot of them. <laughs> All right. I, I was, see, I was really curious what you'd think of it. Anyways. Number four, I got the weasel. Hold on. Um, Hold on. So, yeah, but I'm just going to say how it's... Okay. How this ties into me, a kid hears someone say weasel, and they just think it's really fucking funny, so they just repeat it over and over and over again, because that's how kids think humor works. So They're kids like, function. Weasel, weasel, smeasel, fleasel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't, I think you would, I don't think you love this song, but I think you, you're like, eh. You want to know that's what I think? I, I do want to know. I think it's annoying. Well, no, I think... Uh, I think the lyrics are annoying, but the the and the like mel- the vocals and whatever. But the music is cool, the, and that's one thing that's like pretty much always standard is the music is always pretty good. I um, it reminds me this this would be a perfect TV show theme. Mm, yeah, it's like would, a kid like with a, a weasel, and I TV swear. Show, yeah. I swear to God, this was used as a TV show theme before, but I, I, it's like a fucking, what's it called? Mandela effect for me. Oh. Because I swear to God, I remember late at night, like some weird ass TV show was just like, what? it's a, or was it? I got to weasel, it's a cheese, my please, my please, I got to weasel. And he kind of sings, he kind of sings it like this too. And I can't really do it. And, um, I can't find it anywhere though, so I, I feel like I'm just making probably made it up. up yeah. I mean, um, there's probably a show that had something similar. Probably. Um, it's a pretty simple concept. If you Most know of these songs are pretty simple. If you know what we're talking about, then leave a big, fat, thick comment. Yeah, please. Make it as detailed as possible. Drop a knowledge load all over our lower backs. Write a book about it. Yes. Please. And uh, send us the Amazon link. We'll get it. Well, David will, because he has a job. Tyler will get it, too. He, I will buy two copies. Nice. <laughs> um... I think it's good fun. I think it's just them, uh, another example of them in the studio having fun. But I, I think this one's better than I'm in the mood to move. At least I, for me it is. Um, mm-hmm. I said it's good fun. It doesn't o- overstay its welcome. And then we move on to the next song pretty quickly. So it's kind of like... Yeah. It's um, just there. I, in a good way. I prefer I'm in the mood to move. Um, this one just kind of annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the first example of Weasel. Which comes again later in this album, and it's Ween is one of those bands where they reference themselves a lot, and they'll just bring concepts through um, to different albums a lot. So, yeah, eight out of ten. I love this song. I give it a one too. This one annoys me. <laughs> All right, ne- uh, next song, number five, Fat Lenny. Um, to tie this one in, it's uh, a kid 
making more jokes about fat people. Yep. This time, someone they know, though. Yeah. It's not just, like, some random person walking down the street. It's, like, their friend yeah. at school or, like, their Bad classmate length. at school, at least. Uh, I think you like this song. Do you? I do. Well, the vocals are annoying. They're very annoying. He's He sings them like Cartman, but he's screaming. I have to say, there's a part where the music cuts out, and he goes, What? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, that's my favorite funny. part. That, is, that part my favorite is, part, uh, yeah. probably on this entire album. That part made me laugh my ass off. It is so funny. What? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, oh my god, it is hilarious. But the rest of the song, louder I, than I should have done. But overall, it's okay. It's okay. Overall, eh. There's I, just nothing at this point. It's already like been okay, done. It's, yeah, it seems like album. yeah, it seems like they've kind of like shown me everything they can. Which I know we're only five songs in, but that's how I felt when I was listening mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, that that's some something I think is a problem with this album in general. I'll get to it at the end, but too much of the same. Yes. Especially because this is a very diverse album, nonetheless. Exactly. Um, but uh, I don't think it wears off yet. I think Fat Lenny is amazing. <laughs> the guitar riff is just I love it. It's just, it's just like, bam, 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 and it's just like, and he's just like, Fat Lenny's gonna run, run, run to death. You know that part? He like starts in low and then he's like, oh wait, I can't do that. So he goes up to the high note. Yes. Yeah. I like that part. Anyways, I think it has a nice feel. The, gu- the guitar riff is very simple, but I think it works really well. Um, I love it. It's one of my favorites. I give it a 9 out of 10. I give it a 1 2. The music's not bad, but the lyrics, the vocals really kill it for me. Damn. Yeah, it just annoys, <laughs> just annoys me, and so I don't want to listen to it. That's fair. Yeah, it's um, not working for me. <laughs> next one. Cold and wet. Hold on. So I tie- really wish I fucking listened to these in order. <laughs> I mean, wrote them down. In order. <laughs> yeah, like the one song with like over twenty-five songs. I know. <laughs> um, okay, so cold and wet. Uh, to me, is it's like a kid crying to their mom because they're fucking cold and wet, and they want soup. They like went outside in the rain, playing, and now they're cold, and they're, they're like, "Mom, please, <laughs> cold and please, wet." Mom, please. I think you like this song. I. Uh, this one is the same as Fat Lenny for me. It's just, just kind of, eh, there's nothing new or exciting. It was just another, <laughs> it was just another loud song with silly vocals. And, like, it's not necessarily bad, but it's just like, okay. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, the fade-in is really cool. Yeah. Um. I'll agree with that. And the way, the guitar riff, is like, uh, like, oh, God, how's it go, Debbie? It's like I think it's simple but effective once again. And I think that you can honestly say that for all the songs on this album like this. Yeah. The guitar work is masterful. It's it is so wonderful, good. yeah. And it's especially because it's like it's not like um it's not like uh, Neil Young where it's like this is a professional mastering his craft. It's like this is some kid who's just, just like DIY. got a lot of passion. Yeah, and it almost like is almost like more likable because of that. I like it more, but... Like, fuck Neil Young, right? Yeah, Neil Young's uh, a poser. Sucks. Neil Young should have joined Ween. Yeah. He would have been cool then. Anyways, I actually really like the dumb lyrics. So, I'm cold and wet. Can't you hear what I'm saying to you? Cold and wet. It's the message I'm conveying to you. Yeah, that, that, I gotta say, that made me laugh. And the vocal delivery, I think, is really good. Because it, it... I don't know. I just like it. The solo was also great. The solo was good. I got... Yeah, the solo, the solo was pretty, pretty good. Uh, eight out of ten. I love. I love this song. I gave it a one two, but I think it was. I think I'm gonna move that to a two because I don't think I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. But it, like I said, it's just, you know, it's just another silly, silly. Yeah. Silly you just song. listen to it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Speaking of, the next song is Bumblebee. <laughs> oh yeah. And to tie this in, it's just. I mean, it's just a kid getting stung by a bumblebee and he's crying about it. And I think you don't like this song. Listen, all. listen, dude. The music is badass in this song. But the vocals are so loud, and he's just yelling about dumb shit. And if that, if if they were, if it was mixed a little better, or if the vocals were different, I would love this song. And the fact that it was so, they were so close, uh, makes me dislike it more. This was the first song that I actually like disliked. Mm-hmm. I this song to me, I if it wasn't for the intro, mm-hmm. I w- I wouldn't like this song. Just that part where he's just like. He's just screaming at the top of his lungs, like, ah, sh- yeah, shit, ah, ha, ha, oh, shit, oh, Jesus. And he's like, oh, me. Yeah, if he didn't. Stop me. I do like the lyrics because they're dumb. Because he's, he's like, 
It stung me 47,000 times in the head. It hurt. It hurt. Oh, God. It hurt so badly. See, the, it's like almost, it's so close. Mm -hmm. It is so close, for me at least, it is so close, because yeah, if they, like the lyrics are fine, it's just the delivery. And I get that that's the point, so I guess it's just not for me. If he would have done it just a little bit less intense, like he still could have been screaming it, but I think if he was a little less intense, I would have liked it a lot more. Mm -hmm. To me, I think the intro is fantastic, um, especially because it's, this is exactly how it feels to be stung by B yes, as a does. dumb, dumbass kid. Where you don't know what what pain is actually like and you're just like this is the worst thing that's ever happened to you. yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. and it, because of that i really like this song um but it's like i like you were saying for me it's too abrasive for yes. my own taste but it sometimes i get an itch to listen to something that's just like someone screaming their head off yeah and this, this song, song definitely still has value for sure yeah. and this song fulfills that for me but overall i still only give it a seven out of ten i gave it a one too because like like i said the music is good it's just covered up Speaking of music being good, but something else ruins it. Number, I don't know, I didn't number these. The next one, Don't Laugh, <laughs> in parentheses, I love I love you. you. I knew you were going to say that because, yes. Uh, so can we talk about how the well, first part yeah, is let me like... let me tie it into the theme oh, right yeah. quick. Uh, kid realizes he loves his friends, even though it's kind of taboo, like you're not supposed to. So he's like, oh, come on, don't laugh, I, I love you. And it's like these like 14-year-old yeah. kids, it's like... Bro, are you gay? Exactly, dude, because, like, I still, I've, like, just started, like, telling all my friends that I love them, and, uh, Ooh, yeah, some 14? of them, uh, some of them, uh, it's a good thing to do. I think so, For too. real. I uh, love you, Tyler. I love you, too, David. I love all my friends. That's called non-toxic masculinity. Exactly. It's because there's, there's different kinds of love, and when you're... It's manly a, to love. A good, it is, and when you're good enough friend with somebody, And womanly. Uh, feminine. <laughs> and <laughs> when you're good enough friends with somebody, like... Like, obviously, you care about that person deeply, and it, it, it is love. It's Obviously, it's a different kind of love than family or, like, passion love, but it's still love. And uh, it's a good it's a good emotion to express. Thank you. I think I know exactly how you feel about this song. You like it except for one little thing. Yes. So, holy shit, dude, it's amazing. Oh, my God, dude. It starts out so good. His vocals are kind of picked, uh, uh, pitched up. Um, the music is, like, a really just catchy, like, pop it's, it's exactly it's what it is. It's yeah, the Beatles. It's, it's like a Beatles song. And uh, it's a really catchy, like, 60s feeling, kind of psychedelic feeling uh, pop song. And there's a part where he does, uh, like, a solo, but it's his voice. Yeah, and it, it's funny because if I if someone were to say that to me without me hearing the song, I'd be like, that sounds like the most annoying shit ever. But it's actually amazing. It's so good. It dude. is amazing. I want us to do that in one of our songs. It's amazing. We have to. For sure. Well, you know, if we... If we put some uh, a bunch of vocal effects on, we can make it sound good. That's who. Or sure. we could just do the same thing. We could just they write did. this song, but not have the part at the end. It would go platinum. <laughs> it probably would not, but it could be <laughs> close. Um, before we get to the end, do you have anything else to say? Because I want to talk about the ending specifically. It's a good song. It's an amazing song. That I... part, the, the, the beginning of it, and it's most of the song. Yeah, yeah. Now. Um... Well, hold on. Okay. I, I have a little bit to say about the actual song. Okay, so go ahead. I the beginning where he goes like, chug, 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 I love that. Yeah. That's just such a cool effect. Um, the melody is fantastic. It reminds me of the Beatles. Um, it totally could have been a hit in the '90s. This could have been a hit. No, are you kidding me? Especially with stuff, it would have fit right in with uh, "Groove Is in the Heart." They're different genres, but it's the same kind of like kind of psychedelic yeah, yeah. feel that's what i meant <laughs> if, if someone else with a normal sense of humor and a normal want of fame whatever yes. i just said had written this song it probably would have been a hit you no know matter what? when it was written the fact that it wasn't I, it kind of makes me respect it more yeah yeah um i really like the sentiment of the t of the title don't laugh oh, me you. too yeah i really like me that too. um the mouth guitar solo is stupid but holy shit i love it it's so good. it would have been it wouldn't have been the same if it had been no. anything else. No. Um, if it had just been that, I would have given this another 10 out of 10. I probably would have, too. Well, I probably would have given it a 3. 10 out of 3, dude. Yeah, I probably would have. But here's the thing. Yeah. At the end, they're, like, doing this, like, Don't laugh. I love you. I love you. And they start to fade out, and then someone comes in, Oh! Yeah, just, like, making <laughs> random mouth noises, and then, like, five of them come in, too. And then the last, like, 30 seconds of the song is that. It... It, it sucks. It's way too long. It sucks. Way, way, Honestly, way too long. It's like an entire minute. 
Is it really? I, I don't know, but it it's certainly long. feels like it's it. It's long. It takes forever. And all this, also, um, dude, if that was still in the song, but it was the last, like, 10 seconds, I'd probably still like this song a lot. I'd probably still give it a 10 out of 10, because yeah. to me, Ween is not a serious band. Right. So this song, which is fairly serious, other than, like, the pitched vocals and, like, the weird instrumentation, it's pretty just a standard pop song. Uh -huh. So I think the reason they put it at the end of this song is because it's like, oh, wait, it We're would be still too weaning. serious without a little bit of it. Yeah. Also, but during like the, too much. During like a chorus part of the song, there's like a voice panned all the way to the right, and it sounds like a fucking little kid who's like missing all of his teeth, and he like says the lyrics, but he doesn't say them in any beat, and it's also Ernest kind of... Hemingway <laughs> will always be there for me. That's what he's talking about. It's annoying. I like it though. I, I'm willing to deal with it because the rest of the song is good until you get to the end part. Yeah. Because of that, and only because of that, I had to drop it down a point to 9 out of 10, because yeah. to me, it's just that good, well, regardless. See, I gave it a 2, because the noise is completely ruined it for me, but the noises really did drop it down, like, a full point. Because <laughs> it, it probably would be a 3, if not for... If somebody could... If they re-recorded it without that part at the end, or if there was, like, a version without that part at the end, I would bump it all the time. There are versions of it when they do it live. Nice. But, yeah. Um, I still, I like the idea of it. I think you had shown end. that to me before. I probably have. Um, because this song's really good. It is. It was my favorite for a long time. Uh, it's no longer. Um, but, 9 out of 10, nonetheless. Okay, so the next song, Never Squeal. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how this ties into the, the concept. I think, because there was no real concept, but, like, Kind of like a kid. I think it's like a kid mocking their parents' rules or just authority in general. It's like, yeah. oh, never squeal on the pussy. Don't lie to your mama. Just do what you wanna. It'll be okay. Yeah. I think you think it's alright. This song is almost cool. It's very close, but it's just the vocals are just annoying. <laughs> it's uh, it's whoever. It's Gene. It's Gene, and he's just kind of like talking. I think they're singing at the end, isn't they? Uh, I don't remember. No. Okay, okay. But anyway, yeah, he's just kind of talking and like. <sighs> yeah, if he wasn't, if his voice didn't annoy me as much, I would like this a lot more. <laughs> um. It. I like the lyrics because it's kind of just about like do whatever you want. I like the lyrics themselves for sure. Um, I think the the riff is really good. Like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that and and the music is the music is kind of cool. But this song is a uh, isn't this one also like a couple minutes long? As yeah, this one's to... well, it's only two minutes long, but it's still it's that's too still long. too long. Yeah, it should be like if this song was like a minute, I would actually probably like it. The the thing I do like about this song is instead of like a solo, they whip out a chainsaw and just like start revving yeah, a chainsaw which is kind of and the music gets fucked up but it's, it's i don't cool. get it but it for me it totally works it's kind of it cool. just works yeah. i don't know it's just cool it's just but um still it's it's too long but it's still i think a really good song i love it um eight out of ten still you know i give it a one two but the more i think about it it's probably a two yeah. i don't really i think i was a little bit too harsh on it but yeah you have a squeal on the pusher don't lie to your mama. Don't lie to your mama. Don't lie to her. She's unless she's a bitch, but she's probably not. Unless it's safer for you to lie to her. Yeah, that's true. Then don't lie to her. Just do what you wanna. Just, but and it'll ultimately, be ultimately okay. the point is just do what you wanna. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of doing what you wanna, the next song, "Up on the Hill." Okay. Um. So to tie this one in, this is the one that that explains the Boognish monster a little bit. Oh. Um. Okay. Basically, it's hiding. A kid is just has active imagination, and they're still edgy, so they're like, "Oh, it's a demon god." And that's yeah, that sounds it. like some like fourteen year old. Which is exactly what fourteen year old Ween did, and then they used it still to this day. It's a really cool design, you have to admit. It's just a simple little dude. It's basically their logo. But, I thought uh, it was just the Ween logo. It's, I mean, it is, but it's it's called the Boognish monster. Well, it is cool that the logo has like its own name, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think you like half of the song well okay so it starts acapella yeah and then it's like uh it's, it's gospel i wouldn't say gospel but it's it is a song it's like a it, i see what you're saying spiritual it's like, i guess yeah a yeah. spiritual it's kind of like a spiritual song um and then the second part it comes in with like guitars and shit 
Um, and it's just like the same lyrics, but now it's being played with guitars and drums. Um, actually, honestly, I think it's really cool. It's really catchy. Um, and I think it's cool how, yeah, it starts a cappella and then it brings the instruments in. And the thing is, they do kind of sound like two completely different songs. Uh, but it's still neat. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, I think they absolutely nail the DIY gospel sound. Just, I just, the bomb, she won't eat, won't eat. It's just so catchy and like, it, I don't think they actually do that, but it certainly feels like they do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, and, it's good. They definitely sell, they sell it well enough to where it's like, oh yeah, they do that in church. <laughs> but, but it's, um, okay. Cause, well, I say it because it's gospel to me. That's what I called it. I guess in spiritual. I wouldn't call this gospel, but yeah, that's... it's more of a spiritual, like a, almost like a slave song, maybe. <laughs> I, I guess. But like, it's not meant to be sung in church. But it's just like singing while you're, you're with talking your about friends the feel while you're doing of it. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I no, I, I, I see what you're saying. I don't know, but um, I think they nail whatever style it is that they're going for. Then I agree because it's great. I um, agree. yeah, this is where the boognish is introduced. Um, and I do like that it goes from gospel to a weird, like, country rock metal hybrid. Yeah, no, I do think that's cool. Um, I agree. I love it. 8 out of 10. I give it 2 3. Nice. You're wrong. Uh, fuck, dude. <laughs> next time, next song Wayne's Pet Youngin'. I have no fucking clue what this song means or how it ties into the, the concept that I've made for it, but uh, I do think you like at least the beginning of this song. Dude, listen. So it starts <laughs> with a 25 count, count off, but he just goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and he just counts all the way to 25. It is so funny. It's funny as fuck. And the song <laughs> itself is like, it's kind of standard, honestly. Uh, the solo is really good. Um, but yeah, as, as compared to the rest of the album, it's kind of standard. But honestly, I like it. The solo and the count off actually gave this some extra points for me. A lot. I actually fully agree. I think I added this one to my playlist, actually. Really? Yeah. I especially love the, it's not like the, the it's a stupid intro. But it lasts it's just funny. the right length it's, to it's get just, the joke across. It's just funny, yeah. But not run stale. Yeah. Because it's like, also he's like, hey, lay it on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he just keeps and going. he just keeps going to 25. Yeah, it's <laughs> so funny. Um, the title line is really catchy. We're like, Wayne Pet Youngin. boo doo 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 Yeah. The, the guitar tones, I called them killer. Because they are really killer. good. Uh, and then yet another great solo. If it wasn't for the three, the intro in its entirety in my opinion at least the guitar tones being really cool and then the um solo being really cool it would probably be like eh. right but as is i love it and it's an eight out of ten i give it a two three yeah i like this one a lot nice this one's good all right speaking of really good uh, the next one is nicole the first of the two uh, eight, like eight plus minutes, minutes. Long, yeah. yeah eight plus minutes um, which is so comes out of left field after most of the songs are like one minute like half an hour it feels like yeah. in comparison um there it is so i think this this is the first time that they're not a kid they're like i called it preteen, but it's more like young teen it's probably like the first time they're actually kind of into somebody they're like the first time having feelings about somebody yeah well i've heard that this song is about them murdering nicole oh because they like broke up with them and to, to, the way I, I i interpret it is boys. i call it preteen, but it's probably like 14 15 which isn't really let's pre-teen. be real it's you're basically pre-teen. you're still kind of a preteen, yeah <laughs> um but um they think being edgy is funny so it's like they're talking about murdering and raping their ex oh yeah and it's just like eh, mm-hmm. i kind of don't like stuff like that i will say uh, if it wasn't fucking nine minutes long, I might. Have, if it was another song that was like a minute long, I might be all right with it because the the music at least is cool, mm-hmm. like always. Um, I like the intro actually with the piano and the like. It's like a weird like I don't know what to explain it. There's like a it's like pee! a noise. It's just some kind it's just, of yeah. It's just like some noise that's like heavily filtered probably. Yeah, but it's cool. It and it's cool. really cool. Um. It sets up the groove really well. The yeah, this song the is, bass has a really, or just in general has a really nice groove. This song does have a pretty nice groove, yeah. And I think the main melody is really catchy. The new cool, I love you. Um, I think it's a generally like a really cool soundscape. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the only time the piano is featured in this song or in right. this album, like I think ever. You're right. Um, the 
the first half is I really like it. The second half it takes a very dark turn, and I think she's raped and killed, and the murderers are just like laughing it off. And I think it's supposed to be told from the point of view of a teenager who thinks it's edgy, and so it's funny. So I think it kind of works. It's definitely too long, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. Oh, the other thing, there's like another mouth guitar solo. It's like, I think it's a uh, talk box, but he's like, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Which that was kind of cool. It's not as good as the first time, but it's, it's still not. But it's it's. Kinda I think cool. it still works. Um, I give it two. I think it's definitely too long. I give it a seven out of ten. Uh, speaking of too long, common bitch, which is not too long at all. It's like another minute long song. Uh, to me, this is preteen is edgy and calls girls bitches just because they're. Just because they're girls. Just because, well, just not even just because they're girls, like just because they exist. Because exactly. they're normal. They're they're just people. Exactly. I think it might be about an ex specifically. Probably. But either way, it's just like common bitch. It's like no one says that. No one gives a shit unless you're fucking fourteen. You want to know what I think? I do. Well, good. That's the point of this podcast. I think. It is. That uh, I think that this song would be an amazing instrumental, <laughs> um, or if there was just a little bit less of the talking. It's not talking; it's screaming. Right. It was loud talking. I don't know if you listen to any of the lyrics, but there's like the first thing he says is, "Common bitch, my head itch." <laughs> yeah. And that's like the like stupid nonsense lyrics that I like from them. Yeah. Um, but overall, I like the intro uh -huh. where he's like, "Let me tell you about the fucking bitch, Diener." And yeah. Diener's what they go by Diener and Jeaner sometimes. By the way. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they call the band Wiener. That's not true, but they should. Um, I like the intro. I said it's fucking dope. I think the lyrics are cool because they don't make sense, they just rhyme, and I think the guitar sounds really cool. Once again. It's not bad. But it's, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, it's 7 out of 10 for me, I like it, but it's, it's like, eh. I gave it a 2. Yeah, same thing. It's like, eh. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, like, my first... I remember being, like, 11, and I was watching a video for Ocean Man. Mm -hmm. From, And it just had, like, a picture of the Mollusk album cover. And uh, I was looking at, reading through the comments, and somebody said, this is a pretty good song coming from a band that mostly writes about dicks. And I was like, what? Because I was 11. I was like, how could a band this good write about dicks? And now here I am, so many years later. That tie into the song at all? Not at all. Okay. It just had to do with Ween. That's fair. You said um, Wiener, and it made me think of that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is the first time... In, for me where it's like okay you've done this hardcore punk thing exactly like five times now yeah and you've already shown us with nicole that you want to do other things so like can we get to that mm -hmm. and then they go and then they go into el camino which i think is a uh, preteen making fun of like just mexican people which like, is funny accents. too because like the accent it doesn't even sound like a hispanic person like in some parts it does but then it kind of goes off into like french <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's part of the joke, though, because it's like, it's supposed to be, like, I think it's supposed to be like, oh, these idiots can't even fucking make fun of Mexicans, right? They're, like, <laughs> doing it wrong. I, yeah, I wrote, uh, I, I wrote, hey, we should write a song with what we learned in Spanish 1. That's what this song feels like to me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not crazy about it, it, just because of the stupid accents. Yeah. I still think it's a lot of fun, though. The music's all right. I spent, like, I love the cuando, 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 that, cuando. That part's pretty good. I gotta say, that part's pretty good. Uh, that, he, they reference White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. He's like, one pill makes you smaller, or something. You, you remember, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Um, I didn't notice that. But. I didn't notice it the first time, because it was, like, really weirdly mixed. And then when they come back into the El Camino part, they, like, do it. El Camino. And I like that part. Uh, I think it's about cars, actually. I think El Camino is like a car. And El Camino is a car, yes. Um, and he but, talks about driving it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like the surrealistic uh, lyrics, especially specifically. He's like Cordoba. Oh, she takes me to the moon, and it's like cars don't take you to the moon. No, silly they drive goose. on roads and grass sometimes. Silly goose. But like, cause it's just like, 
the song is about like how much they like their cars and yeah. going fast down the road. And, and it's let like, me tell takes you, me dude, to the moon. when you fucking first get a car, it is the most amazing, liberating feeling <laughs> in the universe. It's not it, wrong. Is, it is the best feeling to just take it on the freeway and roll your windows down and fucking blast your music. The first time you do that, you will. Okay, maybe you'll forget it, but it'll be amazing. It'll feel amazing in the moment. In the moment, yeah. And that's, yeah, I guess that kind of embodies what the song is about. Uh, the song itself is not that good, though. Yeah, 7 out of 10, I still like it, but it's like, I probably wouldn't really listen to it outside of the album. Ah! I gave it a 1, 2. Someone was crawling on my face. There it is. Oh, it's a spider. Speaking of spiders, number, next one. Old Queen Cole. I have no clue what the fuck this song is about, to be honest. It's about Old Queen Cole. Maybe it has something to do with Nicole. I think it does, because in Nicole, there's like a part where he's like, Old Queen Cole. Um, I think it's the same person. It's very forgettable to me. Just compared to everything else on the album, it's just kind of like, eh. Mm -hmm. I do like the f fine. There's, he's, he goes, um, and for you it's okay, because tomorrow's just another day. I like that part. And then I also like... He says, rock roll butter bread, remember what your mama said? That's pretty good. Hey, it's just your life, why don't you grab the biggest knife that you can find now, baby? Yeah, you acting like a lady, you got blood on your pants, and I know that you can dance. And it's like, this is like, if someone who doesn't listen to music and was 14 was asked to write a song, these are the lyrics they would write. Yeah, that, uh, that's Which very I accurate. I kind of like. I remember honest. writing songs like that when I was this age. Did you write this song? I sure did. That ghost wrote this entire um, album, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. This is definitely, this definitely is where it gets kind of stale with the hardcore punk. Yep. Like, some of these songs probably could have stayed on the album. If they would have just been at the end, Yep. it would probably, like, just been better. I agree. But, um, I still like it. It's definitely not as good as Tick or You Fucked Up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, those ones both also, I think, have more personality. This one's just, like... Yeah, yeah. It's just, nah. Um, I gave it a two, so, like, not bad, but, mm -hmm. you know, could be better. All right, next one is... What did you rate it? You said seven. I did say seven. Okay. Next one is Nan. Nan. Um, the song has a lot of potential. This I To me, this is the preteen making fun of the dumb kid in their class. Yeah. I... Okay, go, go ahead. It has potential. The music is, like, almost good. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like they could have done so much more with what they had. I really like this song, especially yeah. the the intro. Hi, I'm fucking Eddie Dingle. <laughs> it's like this fucking idiot, like, kid, just like... Stupid kid. He's just stupid. All the lyrics are, like, about him being stupid. He's like, he's like, mind over matter. But I guess I don't matter at all, you fucker. Yeah. And it's like, um, to me this is, it's Oops. very Beatlesque. I just murdered that spider, I didn't even do that. Stupid. To me this reminds me of the Beatles too. I can see how you'd say that. Um, except the lyrics, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think it's really well, yeah. catchy and the guitar is great once again. I really love, once he's like, t I like this song mostly because of the story that it tells. Cause it's like, at, at the start he's like, I met this girl named Nan and it's like, this guy clearly has a crush on her, mm -hmm. and then, like, but she probably doesn't even know he exists. Probably. Because he's just like, oh, silly girl, oh, yeah, I'm there. so in love with you. And then he keeps saying, like, what's in your mind? What's going on? And he also says, like, if I could get the lid off, I'd look into the jar. <laughs> I fucking love it. And then he, the, when he sees her, like, walking in with Danny, he just immediately flips, and he's like, He's like, yeah, I saw you walk with Danny. He's a fucker, and you a fucker too. How yeah. do you think that make me feel, huh? How do you think that make the me feel? The song is like fucker? if a nice guy wrote a song. Yeah, pretty much. But he's also <laughs> dumb, like really dumb. Yeah. I still like it a lot. In fact, it's one of my favorites. And I gave it a nine out of ten because I really quite like it. I gave it a one too. This one annoys me. Well, fuck. <laughs> Speaking of the one that annoys you, uh, licking the palm for guava. Looking palm for guava. Dude, that fucking loud scratching sound. Oh my god, dude. If that was in the song, I might actually kind of like it. Uh, the song itself is just another, like, kind of, one of their, like, more surreal kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh. it's not bad, but there's just this loud scratching, scraping noise, and it's horrible. This, to tie it into the concept, I think... Oh, yeah, sorry. This is the first time that they're, like, an actual teenager. Like, you're, like... 16, like 16, 17, 17 yeah. 
not maybe maybe 18 um they're trying drugs for the first time um because it's like licking the palm for guava it's like you know when you get the last little bit of drugs when you do marijuana you lick your hand for guava you, no which you is put god. the guava is god you put the weed in your hand and then you lick it everybody knows that i've done marijuana i did it before we <laughs> record this episode lick, this song lick would my be palm for, what this this song would be better if it was combined with the next one Yes. Because it's too short to really make an impact. I actually really like the blast of feedback. I hate it. I, it's definitely something that not everyone's going to like. It hurts but it's, my ears. for me, it's just like, yes, it's fucking abrasive as fuck. It hurts my ears. I like it. 7 out of 10. 1, 2. Hurts my ears. Uh, speaking of hurts your ears, Mushroom, Mushroom Festival, Festival in Hell has hell. the exact same noise. It's the exact same noise. But it's worse because this song is cool. But, but the first, like, 50 seconds is literally just that noise and screaming. I love it, dude. It it's sounds so like, good. It's probably what hell sounds like. But the thing that's, is... That's why it's worked so well. What's the name of the song, dude? Mushroom Festival in Hell, dude. They don't have Imagine mushrooms tripping in shrooms in hell. This is exactly what oh. it would sound like. Exactly what it would sound like. Yeah, I get it. And the rock part is badass. It's awesome. It's like a metal song. It's, it's like a doom metal song. It really is. Yeah. Um... This one is a teen tries mushrooms and has an awful trip. Trip, probably, yeah. Like, the worst trip you could ever imagine. Um, I think this one's a lot better than Licking the Palm for Guava. Um, I agree. I really like the scream at the beginning. Because it's, like, got this, like, rising, like, Ooh, and you kind of think it's, like, a synthesizer. And then he starts taking breaths, and it's like, oh, this is just some fucker, like, screaming at the top of his lungs. Yep. Like, I like that. I understand not liking it. I can, um, I can see the appeal behind it, though. The right. song is also about like just like it's to me it feels like like little demon elves like fucking with someone on their trip and, like i kind of like the idea of that um as a song not as a real as thing. an experience yet <laughs> um seems like it'd be cool yeah it just seems fun um it 100 percent sounds exactly like the title and i think it gets props for that you know what that's a good point for some reason i never made the connection with the hell and the title sounding like the hell in it and that makes me like it more I just I really wish that screeching sound was in there because it, it hurts my ears like it literally physically hurts oh it hurts my ears too but I like it well you would say that you fucking weirdo yeah I'm a masochist um 8 out of 10 one, I gave it a 1 too but I think I'm gonna raise that to a 2 alright the next song is it Marble Tulip Juicy Tree? nope it's L-M-L-Y-P oh let me lick your pussy yeah. oh my god we're not even like halfway through are we? Mm, probably not. Jesus. We, we can start speeding up a little bit. No, it's okay. So, I, for me, this is a teen having sex for the first time and mm -hmm. thinking they're, like, an absolute badass and, like, the most romantic person on Earth. Like, and they're just, like, an absolute, like, bombshell. Yep. Um, what do you think of it? I'm really curious what you think of this song. Well, I think it definitely achieved what it set out to achieve. It sounds like a cheesy porn soundtrack that's just vulgar because a fucking 15-year-old wrote it. <laughs> Um, I, honestly, I should like this song because it's got a vocoder in it. Yeah, it does. Like the talk box, like solo that he's doing, which is pretty cool. It's got really cool wah wah guitar. Yes, it's it does. really funky. It's really funky. But it's but it, you didn't expect to hear that on the from the fucking Ween album. It's also especially very, after the first couple songs. It's also very long. I d it is. And because of that, and because of how vulgar and stupid it is, it I don't like it as much. Um. That's fair. For me, this song is just really groovy right from the get-go. It is. I think it's fantastic. I definitely agree with you there. I love the idea of this song, because it's it's a Prince song. It's a Prince send-up where they're making, not making fun of Prince, because they actually really like Prince. They're, they're paying tribute, but also making fun of him at the same time, yeah. which you can do. And That's like the best way well. to do it. Exactly. Because like Prince is like overly vulgar. Not to this degree, because he tried to like hide it in the lyrics. He's a little more like, subtle, but yeah. Well, this is pretty subtle, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's called L M L Y P. They could have just named it the actual. Of course, phrase. of course. You you wouldn't even know. Um, there's a part where he's like talking to the girl. My favorite part. Yeah. He's like right there between your legs, baby. Yeah. You know what that is, don't you? Yeah. That's a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's, this was another one that's hard to talk about critically because it's stupid. It's, and it's supposed to be. But it's fun. I love it. it uh, I love the massage part because he's like, I'm going to give you a massage. And then he's, she's like, what? What? And then he's like, you pussy. <laughs> it's like, I want to lick it. And it's just like, the girl is just like, okay. Like, 
wants a massage and like doesn't want this man to just violate her. It's not violate because it's, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, if it's consensual. Right, but you know. Um, the guitar work is once again amazing. Yep. The outro solo is fan fucking tastic. That's yep. what I wrote. And then I said I used I used to think it was overlong, but no more. I think it's I think it's exactly how long it should be. I think I think also, everything. I think the song came out exactly as they wanted it. That's true. This is the song that when they play live, they jam. There's Ooh. versions of the songs that go on like 30, 45 See, minutes. that sounds kind of badass. It is kind of badass. I'll, we, can, we can play it in the car. Um, anyways. We don't have to. Okay. <laughs> I gave it a 10 out of 10. Uh, I gave it a 1 too, but I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, the more I think about it. I, this song definitely has artistic merit. Um, the annoying parts don't make it bad, so I'll give it a 2. Fair enough. Uh, next one is Papa Zit. I have no clue how this ties in to the theme at all. Um, Loud. Yeah, it's another... It's, it's yet another... Yeah, hardcore another punk hardcore song. punk rock song that's loud and annoying. The part that's not annoying is boring. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a double-edged sword and both sides cut you. The only thing for me, I really like the, the guitar in the background. Uh, the guitar work in general, I think, is just also it's really good. It's still good, good yeah. Because the, the guitar is really weird. It's like... But it's like not melodic right. at all, but right. I really like it. <laughs> I still give it a 7 out of 10, but it's eh. 1 2. Speaking of eh, Old Man Thunder. This song is like not even really a. I don't know if I even wrote this down. It's not even really a song. It's like 12 seconds long. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's like a. I have no clue what it means, but it's like. I think they're making fun of their parents' music taste. Probably. It's kind of funny. I don't, I don't really even feel comfortable giving this, like, a song reading, because it's not really a song. Yeah, I just said, meh. It's okay. Six it's, out of ten. It's fine. It's, it's, it is what it is. I'll give it a one, two, I guess. It's, it, it just it is what it is. Uh, mm-hmm. It's funny. The voice he's doing kind of sounds... I don't know exactly... It's Bruce Springsteen is who he's making fun Yes, it's, it kind of sounds like him. It's funny. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one is Birthday do- birth. Well, hold on. Birthday Boy? Birthday Boy. Dude. Uh, this... So tied in, I think it's a teen has their first real breakup. Yeah. Like real relationship and real breakup, and it fucks them up. Like it really fucks hey, them up. Hey, it turns out I did write down Old Man Thunder. I gave it a two. I apologize. Really? I two. Yes. Good. <laughs> anyway, birthday boy. That's it. Okay. So, you want to know what I think? <laughs> Next song. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, dude. I think you really like it. You're right. You are 100% right. Um, here's the thing, though. The effects, I w- the first thing I wrote was effects are too much, but as you like continue listening to the song, it kind of settles in. Uh, and the lyrics, well, it's really catchy, and it just feels really genuine. It's like a song about, like, I made a mistake and things suck, and like, I'll, maybe I'll see you, maybe I won't, but whatever happens, we're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's good. It's very, very, very good. Um, it kind of reminds me of Klaatu, the vocals a little bit. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I can. I you never put that connection, but I can see it. Yeah. Made um, that connection, but I can see it. But no, this song is fantastic. And there's a, uh, I guess it's like kind of spoken word part at the end. It's really just Ween doing what Ween does, but the one guy just starts talking. But it, it's good. It's really good. So, I think you're going to like this song even more after I say it. Probably. There's just like a story behind it? Um, yeah. Then I probably will like it. Um, so, first off, I love the intro so much. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah pain take one and he's like yeah pain he says it again i i don't know it just damn it's just dumb and stupid but i love the guitar tone the the like it's like if it's they, like super distorted. it's like they turned it up you know they have to say like turn it up to 11 yeah they just turned it up to 110 like yeah and then they recorded it through like a shitty microphone and then recorded it once more and then turned it up the volume once more it's just like so loud but and it's, like compressed but at the same time it's, so it's good. good it's so good and it doesn't like clip yeah it doesn't so, which is kind of weird I don't know how they did that but I don't either uh, honestly they probably just fucked around so much and then just stopped when they got something they liked that, that'd be my guess I'm not that, I'm not saying that in like a bad way um, that'd just be my guess as to how they did it mm-hmm. um, to me this was also Beatlesque. like yep. if if it had normal instrumentation this would be a Beatles song it yeah. sounds like a Beatles song melody wise and lyrics wise yeah um the lyrics legitimately make me sad. They're they're very like hauntingly beautiful. I really like it. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think if it had normal instrumentation, it would be kind of generic and boring. Yeah, and I think that I think that's how the weird mixing does it credit. 
Yeah. That, that might be why they did it, because there really isn't... There wouldn't be many other ways to make this interesting other than doing that. Yeah. So but it worked. Yeah. It worked very well. So the outro, like, spoken word, mm-hmm. those are both voicemails. Um, yeah. So the first one is from his dad saying happy birthday and um, that he's at work and he'll talk to him later and happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. And then the second one is his mom is his mom singing happy birthday yeah. and then saying, um, I hope you're doing really well and I'm really proud and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it ends with a, an echoes from Pink Floyd, like sample, mm-hmm. which is the reason why that's there is because they recorded over, they had a cassette tape of that song or of that album or whatever, and then they recorded over it. And that little bit at the end, they didn't catch it and they didn't cut it off. <laughs> so they just left it there. That's kind of cool. It's to me, that's the best way. Cause this is another like super serious song yeah. and we can't be that serious. Right. So leaving it in there i think kind of takes the edge off of it at the very end yeah yeah yeah. um and i think if they would have done because it's so short mm-hmm. if they would have done something like that with don't laugh i love you it would have worked a lot better oh it definitely would have so the reason the voicemails are there um this is gene ween aaron is his name um his real name he he had uh been in a relationship with this girl i think like two or three years um and she broke up with him on his birthday on his 20th birthday and so that's why it's like um like a sad song but it's mm, oh that's why it's called God, birthday that boy sucks but I and love that's it. why at the end his dad calls and it's like hey happy birthday hope everything's going well you know because it kind of like adds to that like damn life sucks right now yeah. you know this is supposed to be my day exactly yeah that's and, and I, just, I kind of picked up on that how it's like a sad song but it's like it's supposed it's juxtaposed to like it's supposed to be being a good day yeah and that's it's very much um Kind of like something I would do. It, I, it actually, yes, it reminds me of you a lot. Like this is something I would. I think if you and I worked together on a song, this is what would basically happen. Well, it's beautiful and I love it. Um, yeah. Uh, ten out of ten, easily the best song on the album. I agree. Um, I gave it a two three, but it did it did make it to my playlist, so it could that could be raised for sure. Speaking of making it to your playlist, Blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> I have no fucking clue what this song is about. Is you talk okay um it's got a drum machine and then they're they're a really bass. just a really bass. really low bass. really low bass that's just doing like chromatic notes uh listen i bet this song was fun as fuck to record <laughs> as a song it's not fun it's not fun to listen to um it's it's funny for like it feels like 30 seconds long i might actually kind of like it but it's just it's four minutes long it's this is one of the much. longest songs on the album yes yeah, it's, it's too it's much like, it's way way too fucking long and it comes right after the best song in the album exactly i do like the transition between the two because it's like just like i don't know how to explain it but i'll yeah it's really cool that but it it ruins the flow of the album Uh Uh it should have been put somewhere else or in a or specifically in a shorter shorter length or just not be on the album honestly if it was shorter and in the same spot i might be kind of okay with it I do like, there's a part where the, the vocals and everything cut out and it's just the bass going boom, 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 that's and it gets cool. like really loud. Yeah, that's kind of I cool. like that, but that's it. I, I fucking, I gave it a 3 <laughs> out of 10. I gave it a 1, 2. Really? Yeah, it was not, didn't like it. That uh, It's only a 1, 2? Mm-hmm. It's not a 1. 1 is for like pure shit. Actually, zero, one is for pure shit. I feel like it should be a 1, but who am I? I'm your friend. Uh, Are you? Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> Next song, Squelch the Weasel. Squelch the Weasel. Oh, fuck. So I said young adult, but I don't know why I said that. I just mean teenager. Like 18 to 19. Mm-hmm. This is the... Uh, Maybe 20. It's like a finger-picking song. Yeah, it's like folk. Yeah, folk it's... Uh, which is weird, because it seems... This seems like something I should enjoy, but... It, eh. mm. He talks in, like... He says words like betwixt and, like, thou... And it sounds stupid. <laughs> yeah. If he would have just sang it normally, then I probably would have liked it a lot more. Yeah. So, to tie it in, I think it's like the young, you know, like 19, still thinks Weasel is funny, but now they're not a kid and they can actually come up with like some sort of jokes about it. Mm-hmm. So like their joke is, oh, what if we wrote a folk song about just fucking weasel. weasels? And it's like, eh. I, I do like the acoustic guitar. It's definitely a welcome change. Yeah. Um, the weasel returns. I do like when he says, my flex betwixt, my flesh betwixt my skin. 
Which is such a dumb fucking thing to Does say. It make it, I yeah, it. flesh and skin are the same thing. I like the solo. I think the outro is a parody of Roundabout. Maybe. Oh, maybe. I, I think see. it is. I but, um, and yeah, did you say you like the solo already? Yes. Well, I like it too. It's really, it's kind of weird because it's like a hammering electric guitar over a fucking finger picking song with no percussion, but it works. Yeah, it just does. It works really well. Um, I still give it an eight out of ten because it's, I just love the feeling of it. Um, and also just because it's so different from everything else, which that's kind of like what Ween is known for. Mm-hmm. Um, this album, at I don't, it's, it's hard to, it's simultaneously like one of the most diverse albums I've ever heard, and then also like one of, like very, very similar. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's ha- really hard to explain without just listening to it. It's because you have, uh, you have really unique songs like Squelch the Weasel and Let Me Lick Your Pussy and fucking Blackjack and Birthday Boy. All of those sound like they could come from different albums. They sound but like they then come you from have, different bands. But then you have 20 albums. songs that are... <laughs> guitar so it's on one hand it's the same thing on the other hand it's amazingly diverse yeah. to be fair they do do that guitar and screaming thing very well oh yeah but uh i didn't say it was a bad thing i just said it was just a thing i'm, I'm not saying you did either but <laughs> I, it's weird because i feel like all of the like hardcore punk songs are shoved at the beginning yeah if they and were like, spread out a little more it probably would have been better for um, sure i think it kind of works though with the concept of the album of like kids growing into maturity yeah basically. that's true that's true because like that kind of fast hardcore like yell punk yelling stuff like no one who's a real adult listens to that come on no i'm what? just kidding obviously it was a joke what but, do you mean but like adults don't listen to music they listen to npr and podcasts yeah but like that was a joke uh obviously um but still Nobody like when you podcasts. think of maturity you you don't think of hardcore punk no you just don't um but yeah, anyways, I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think we already said that. I gave it a 2. two. Alright, next song. Marvel Tool of Juicy Tree? Yes, it is. I actually wrote a lot about this for some reason. <laughs> well, I don't know exactly what it's about, but it's definitely involving drugs. Well, it sounds it sounds like another I Am The Walrus type thing. Yeah. Uh, the music is dope. It's awesome. Uh, the vocals, obviously... <laughs> pretty uh part for the course are not as dope but they're not horrible uh really you don't like them i don't like them that much hmm. uh i don't like them as much as i could um That's fair. it doesn't the verses are way too long in my opinion if they were much shorter then i would like it a lot uh and they do the solo is awesome they do like a really cool layering it's thing so with, like good. like really fast guitar and they layer it over and they pan it to both ears and it's yeah um if this song was shorter i would like it a lot more however it is still pretty good. Um, I really, really like this song. I like the backwards guitar thing. They have. Yeah, it's really trippy and cool. Um, I think this one's actually really Beatlesque. Yes. Um, the chorus is so good. We just like marble tulip juicy tree is where I want to be, and the guitar is like fucking going insane. Yeah. Oh, I love you know, it. I, I de- this I definitely was feeling the Beatles influences with this one. I love the part where he's like, little birdie wants to be set free. Hee! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just love dumb shit like that. Because it's, I, don't, I just like it. I don't know. I think the drums on this song are actually really fucking good. I agree. And the guitar work, again, fantastic. By far the best guitar solo on the album. Definitely. Oh my god, it's so badass. I think it's a psychedelic masterpiece. Tell me if, if, this, if I told you this song came out in the late 60s, you wouldn't believe me. Like, uh, probably not. I mean, well, I don't know. Fuck. At least without the vocals. Maybe. Like that. Maybe. Maybe, actually, yeah. Did they have... Did they do guitar stuff, like, in the solo in the 60s, though? Yeah, late 60s. Okay. You ever heard of Hendrix? Well, Jimmy? okay. Jimi Hendrix? No, you're right. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? I probably would believe it. Strange. 10 out of 10. And same thing for Don't Laugh, I Love You, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I actually. give it 2-3. Yeah, this one's good. All right. Last song can't believe it's already over dude it's felt like we just started it's felt like we've been talking for 30 years it's felt like we just started 30 years ago <laughs> puffy cloud puffy cloud uh young adult smokes a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of weed a lot that's literally just the point is yeah it, it's a just a stoner song for stoners uh surprise i love it <laughs> really yeah Talk I, about it. okay well here's the thing um i wish the vocals i wish they didn't sing it like that because they sing it like really really quietly it's almost like ASMR, mm-hmm. um, but it's just like an easygoing, like, 
simple guitar song and like it's like a song that you would sit down with all your friends and sing it and uh yeah it's i don't know it's, it's good it, this one made it to my playlist i like this one a lot yeah it's a really good closer too it is an amazing album closer i think i think it's a fine song but to me it's just kind of eh. really um, yeah wow yeah no i i like this one um they didn't smoke a lot of pot to write this album. They no did way. something a little harder. Than you had that. to, yeah, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe they were chasing it with pot. But. Yeah, it's it's I, I, it's fine. I don't dislike it, but it's just there to me. Wow, that's funny. Yeah, this is one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm surprised because I've never thought much about this uh, this song. I think "Marble Tulip Juicy Tree" would have been a much better ending to the to the album, and that's kind of how I view it. Is like "Birthday Boy" would have been pretty good too. True. Uh, the way I kind of like look at this is that Marble Tulip Juicy Tree is the ending of the album, and Puppy Clouds just like the like, uh, what's the word? Um, Temple on. Encore, basically. Yeah, that's, Which, that, that makes sense. A lot of albums do that, where they end on this big grandiose song, and then kind of like Her Majesty. Yeah. Obviously, it's a little different because that song's like twenty three seconds long, but it's the same like feeling. It's it's definitely the same idea. Yeah. The same vibe. Her Majesty is the last song off of. Abbey, Abbey Road for anybody Abbey who doesn't know. Um, the song before it is called Scabby The Road. End. <laughs> Sca- oh, fuck, gross. The song before it is called The End, and it's Scabby like this, this big, really cool song, and then uh, it goes quiet, and then this really tiny little finger picking song comes in. It's just a nice, pleasant ending after the really big ending, and that's it's the same feeling with this song. 7 out of 10. I gave it 2 3. Yeah, I like this one. Alright, so overall. What did you think of the album, and what did you give it at the end? Okay, so, um, there's lots of good, but there's also lots of meh for me. <laughs> um, there's a couple of, like, really, 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 really good songs, uh, but it's mostly just kind of dumb nonsense. Uh, now, I understand that's what they were going for, so I'm not going to remove points for that, but I will say it's not necessarily my thing. Uh, I don't think I would listen to this all the way through again, but I would definitely listen to the songs that I really like off of it again. So I'm going to give it a two because, you know, it's just kind of eh. Um, I might, given the opportunity, I might buy it just to say I had it. But like I said, I probably, I think only every once in a while I would listen to it all the way through just to be like, wow, this is a thing that was made. <laughs> but overall, it's, it's just kind of like, it's very middle of the road for me very unique yeah i one thing i th- i think about i think about this album yeah th- one thing you have to consider is that gene and dean were 20 years old when this album came out which is badass yeah so like they're not gonna be that mature right. we're, we're not that mature this yeah. podcast has plenty of screaming and, and guitar solos and hardcore <laughs> punk on it so and wieners yeah because we're both 1920 um <laughs> it's a weird really, way to really fucking it. old um, a thousand nine hundred years, almost two grand, dude. Almost two grand years. Almost two grand. Anyways, Maybe. that was an unfunny joke that I took on way too long. I think if this, if Ween had made this album, fucked off and disappeared, never to be seen again, this would have been one hell of a cult album. Yeah. It would have been as big as uh, in the airplane over the sea, if not bigger, because my God, this is the perfect type of album for that, because mm-hmm. it's got a lot of unique. Uh, uniqueness. Mm. Uh, no one else could have made this album. Right. No one no, else. I, could I agree made with it. that. Yeah. And it's definitely not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. But God damn it, it's one of those songs. I think it's one of those albums that you need to listen to once in your life and decide whether you like it or not. You know, you know what? I'm what? I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. I think you should just at least give it a shot, even yeah. if you hate Ween and you think it's the worst thing ever. Just, just give this album a shot. Because please, Dane. Does. Please, Jake. Please. please. Oh my God. Please. It. I got Tyler to like it. Vaughn's, Vaughn, Vaughn and Matt. Come on, please, guys. It does have, it does have some really good parts. You know what, dude? I'll probably uh, next time I'm hanging out with one of them, I'll just throw it in the rotation, and I'll be like, "Ooh, who's this song by?" And I'll be like, "Well." It's they funny. won't notice. I wrote it. They won't notice. I wrote it. I'll take mm-hmm. credit. I'll take credit for it. Do it. <laughs> They'll probably be like, "Oh, it sucks." He'll be like, "This is fucking awful." Um, I give it. A 9 out of 10. I don't think it's perfect. I think it could have easily been perfect if they had taken some of the weaker, like, hardcore punk songs out and replaced them. at least something more interesting with them. Yeah, and, like, because they can do that really well. You Fucked Up is a fan-fucking-tastic song, as is Tick and, uh, I don't know, some other ones. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it, 
that's something I do think Ween got better at as time goes on, as you'll see. I will bring back Ween multiple times, one of my favorite bands. In their later albums, they definitely got more diverse, relied less on the same kind of vibe. That's good. Um, but yeah, overall, I really love, love this album. It's not my favorite Ween album, but I think it's a solid one. I think this is uh, definitely something most people should listen to, especially if you want... If you think you might like Ween, I think this is a good entry point. Yeah. Um, Ween kind of has two different phases. They have the in, the beginning phase where it's very lo-fi, and they're ending for the second phase where they're like very uh, just diverse. Um, and this kind of has both. The next excuse me, the next two albums aren't nearly as diverse, but they're just as lo-fi, if not more lo-fi. Um, and. It kind of has a lot of diversity for the most part so i think it's a good mixture of both worlds so very good album i think what uh, did you like the production overall the mixing production everything overall? i did not have a problem with it there's not a single part that i that it bothered me okay so because it's very lo-fi yeah uh, yeah it was cool um the thing is like when a whole album when an artist's sound is like that i can kind of dismiss it even in parts where it's like not great i can kind of dismiss it because there's a certain charm to diy things for me yeah yeah so yeah nine out of ten you said two two out of, two two out of three two out of two two out of three ain't bad that's what they say all right so um yes your album second moment you've all been waiting for uh so how could i tyler is engaged how could i possibly <laughs> how could i possibly follow up such a such an album as <laughs> God ween Satan the one is by Ween. I forgot, thank you. Um well God And that reminds me of <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock. Okay. Uh, for no other reason than the first than one of the songs on there is about Noah's Ark. But the album that we'll be listening to this week is Multiplication Rock. Um I don't remember exactly the name of the artist, I'll definitely have it written down, but it's all the schoolhouse rock songs, all the math ones. Um, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I picked this one Bob is Bob Duro, I guess. Bob Duro is in it. Uh, there's another. There's two other. There's this. Grady the, Tate. Grady Tate. <laughs> Blossom Deary and. Yeah, Blossom yeah, that's Deary. it. Uh, Bob Duro, Grady Tate, and Blossom Deary. Um, those are the, the singers on this. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I'm very excited for you to listen through this, though. Um, I will say. I don't know if I should necessarily say this, but when you listen to this, keep in mind that this is made to teach multiplication first. Um, okay. However, I don't know. That's all. That's all I'll say. I don't want to give away too much. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I personally always love Schoolhouse Rock, um, and the fact that they put them all into an album makes me cream. <laughs> so that's that's your album, folks. Damn. Okay. Uh, what year did that come out? Oh, that's a good question. I have no fucking clue. I think it was a 70s. Nope. No? 90s. Well, that's not it. Fuck, dude. I don't know. What, wait, don't know. What's, what's the date at the bottom of the thing? It doesn't say. No. It probably does. I was on the wrong thing. 1973, okay. 1973, okay. So, probably going to be, the top 10 is probably going to be a return to what I like a lot of music. But, but yeah, that's Ooh, our album. Tyler's bad music tape. That's our album. I don't, you can't taste it. <laughs> um, that's our album. Thanks for listening. Uh, Bye.